All right, so this video is on how life works, part two, in reference to the youth. Um, the youth have my heart simply because I, re I recall when I was a young man and all the other thoughts I would have and all the illusions and mirages that I would uh, just fall for on a daily basis. And that's mainly the thing that the youth fall for is a lot of illusions and mirages because they don't know any better. Life has not yet dealt them the hand where it humbles them. Life humbles everybody on planet Earth, eventually. But the problem is, is that when you're young, you're ambitious, you've got all this energy, you got all this, uh, all these dreams, visions, all this up here, and, uh, and it's just like, go, go, go. And nothing's really thought out you know and all this stuff so it's really they come to a place of a dead end or an abrupt stop or they get taken advantage of they get conned or they get you know, their their uh, money stolen or let's say they put their heart into uh, another person's hands like a young girl falls for a boy and she gives her her heart to the young boy the young boy all too often, I'm not gonna say every time, but all too often, as the old cliche says, they're just, they just want one thing. They just want sex with that one girl. They wanna say, I did it, I got it, I'm leaving now, right? Like, and then brag about the fact that they were able to get it. It's a prize, so to speak. And so, I wanted to talk about the young person's perspective on life and how they could avoid trouble or problems if they just navigate and use this wisdom to really help them not fall for... Uh, I made another video about grooming. Uh, the, the video I made about grooming had to do with an older person using psychology to manipulate a younger person and really um, everything was a setup. Right? They, they, they made pretend that they loved them, they made pretend that they cared for them, but in the end, it was all to get an achievement or a goal. They had hidden motives, hidden agenda inside of their heart that they were inching their way through, through actions that they would portray to that person. So they were winning them over. And then when they won them over, that's when they revealed the master plan. They pulled back the curtain and said, okay, this was re really what I was all about all along. But I had to go through all those steps in order to get to this location. And so there's all kinds of grooming. Uh, some grooming has to take place with where, where it's sexual and then other grooming has to take place where it's material or money or possessions or something to do with those lines. Uh, grooming to get something from the person, right? So, uh, in this video I just wanted to kind of like minister to the people that are, are, are coming up behind me all the mistakes that I made really trying to give back to them so that they wouldn't have to fall into those same traps so today it's about like the illusions and the mirages of life and how so many people see something off in the distance and they just chase after it and really it was just a fantasy and I don't blame them with all this television and all this hype. One of the things is is that, let me say this, people hype everything up with uh, motivational talks. They hype up stuff and they inflate. It's like a lot of helium. Anything to do with uh, motivation is to like esteem you, is to hype you up and then it'll get you going only for life to let you know like, no, <laughs> the door is closed and the, the rejection is real and so it's um I don't know what you want do you want to be hyped up and then let down or do you want to be on a realistic basis going about life grounded understanding that it's more probable that it will not work out for you but in the long run it will and what I mean by that is, is that every setback is a set up for the future. You have to understand that people are constantly dying. So the people that are up on top right now, Donald Trump and all the people that are billionaires and somebodies, 
their day will come where they expire. When they expire, people in their 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, that they've learned all these lessons throughout life. They've been rejected, they've been let down, they've been told no, they've been, you know, all this. By default, they move up. They move up because the process of life continues to evolve. The teenagers take the places of the, the 20 and 30 year olds of being uh, through the, the process and the system of learning the do's and don'ts to life. They, when you're about to make a business deal with somebody, it's probably a good idea not to come off as too with too much energy, too too excited. You know, you might give up. You might show your hand to the other person and say, "Man, he wants it too bad," and then the other person in their psychology might say, "You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the price up on you because you want it so bad." So now. It was this, but now I'm gonna move it up to this. And you might say, but that's not what you said over the phone yesterday. You said we had a deal for this. And they're like, but you're showing too much. So people have to learn through the process of elimination or the process of psychology and all that, the do's and don'ts of life. And often what happens is, is that you, you go through this process of say an interview, as an example, you're going to an interview and you make mistakes in the interview. You wish that you would have said something. You wish that you could take something back. You wish that you would have said something else, etc. And they call you back and they say you did not get the job, but thank you for applying. But the problem there is, is that you feel rejected. You leave that place saying, man, I didn't get it, right? Well, you got to set back, but only to be set up next time. Uh, the, the next interview, you might not get that job either, but you will be better than your last interview, right? I'm not going to say that the very next interview you're going to get the job because that first interview went bad for you. So now, definitely this one is going to work out for you. In my life, I've been rejected over and over and over again. And just when I think, okay, surely this time it's going to work out, I get rejected again. So it's not like it doesn't have any personality or sense to it like okay now life is going to deal me a, a good hand because I've been rejected so many times it'll just deal you another bad hand because we're in a system and we're in a process of really weeding out the fake from the real right when you go through this process in the end when you when you come out of the other end and you actually get the promotion the responsibility that you're going to bear in that in that position takes all the fruit that you bared through all the rejection you were. so it weeded stuff out that was bad stuff it was dead stuff in your life you understand every time you go through rejection every time you go through failure it kills a part of you it kills something inside of you that was not alive to begin with it's chopped down so like for example you might expect something in life and then you not get it. Something in you dies at that point. It says, man, that's unrealistic expectations. You know, I'm expecting millions of dollars to fall from the sky. And I really believe that it will, but it's not happening. So with time and time again, as your beliefs continues, certain other things start to, to fade and wither, right? And little by little, those rose petals start to fade and die. It's because those things were never meant to be alive in the first place. And what I mean by that is, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. You're supposed to have faith and you're supposed to have hope and you're supposed to believe in all that good stuff. However, there's places and things that you're supposed to put those deposits into and there's other locations where it's going to not work out no matter what. You understand what I'm saying? Faith without works is dead. So to believe that it's just spontaneously going to just happen is on unrealistic expectation so you're putting a demand or you're putting um, a deposit an investment in dead ground in a place where it's not going to return back to you with with a return uh, and so as you go through this system called life when you're a teenager, you make a bunch of bad experience. You have a bunch of experiences, okay? A lot of smoking and drinking and partying and sex and 
and, and all that. And it, although it may seem pleasurable at the beginning, everybody goes through a system where it, it means less to them as they do it more and more. So as they do it more and more, the pleasure is not at the peak that it started off in. It started at, at a level 10, and each and every time they have sex now, it, it goes down a grade. It became more of a habit than a pl uh, than this ecstasy, pleasure like, orgas orgasmic, you know, uh, illusion that they had in their mind. You know, the very first time, right? So anything that you do over and over again, you practice it. It means less to you, right? And you grow callous to it. You grow numb to it. It's almost like a repetitive thing. So. As you are growing up and a teenager and you're making all these stupid decisions, you're growing conscious of the fact that that uh, your life is is uh, meant to be more than just pleasure. Your life is meant to be lived out with purpose and destiny and a calling, something worth more than just pleasure, right? You start to define your life in segments and you start to see like, I'm better than just this. I don't want to, that was good for a season. You start to evaluate your your motives, your actions, your mindset, you start to see the people around you and you start to say, man, I, we've been doing this already far too long, you know, just sitting down on a chair playing poker or dominoes and just drinking and smoking. It was good for a season, but now I'm bored. I want to move on with my life. Or I've been clubbing, I've been partying, and I've been, you know, hanging around with these guys far too long, just posting up in the, in the corner looking for fights. You know, I guess that that was cool when I was 13, 14, 15 years old, but now we're 20, 25 years old and we're still doing the same thing. It's time to move on. And so we start to have these defining moments in our life where life itself is weeding out the, the real from the fake, the, the, the authentic, the, the stuff that matters versus the stuff that, that is dead to begin with. So those things that are dead start to come out of your life little by little through the process of being rejected, of having closed doors, of being backstabbed, of, of being um, um, manipulated, deceived, judged, all this stuff does something to you where it molds you and shapes you into almost an understanding of how, how the real world works. And once you start getting the concept of the real world, you start to understand like how you have to take care of your own self, how you, how you have to um, take all your knowledge, all your wisdom, and really position yourself to being a winner in life, a champion in life. So you have to get your act together. So you have to go to sleep early. You can't be waking up at 12, 1, 2, 3 in, in the afternoon anymore. You can't be drinking. You can't be doing this because then you're not sober. And if you're not sober, you can't think right. And if you can't think right, you can't articulate yourself the way that the, the respectable people articulate. And so you have to dress better. And then life starts to show you this is the way it really is right and it, at least if you want success at least if you want to move up in life if you're a bum and you just really want to stay there and you're comfortable being nothing which i don't believe anybody's comfortable being nothing everybody has this ambition inside of their heart to be something in life and so they go through this process of elimination where they start to see like this is garbage this has to go this has to go and then they go through the process of elimination with people places and things oh i have to move out of this neighborhood this neighborhood is no good i have to get out of here and they start to define their, their life and their chapters of their life by by what's negative and what's positive and they really want to just stray away from the drama the problems the negativity the bad vibes the the people that are always looking for problems and and all that they want peace now they want tranquility they, they you know other things that they used to fight to have now they fight not to have they, they they push those things away it's a nightmare to them now it's it was uh one upon one upon once upon a time it was like heaven to them now it's hell to them and so now as you go through the process of elimination of being rejected like i said because you don't move from zero to a hundred overnight you don't get to be Donald Trump overnight you have to go through stages even Donald Trump had to go through stages to be who he is today in terms of uh, billionaire and and um, just one of the most famous people on planet earth right whether you love him or hate him that's what he is so understand that there's a difference between chasing mirages and illusions and really being grounded and really focused on what's in reality, right? 
and life itself is going to show you like if you're in the right uh, uh, ground or if you're on the wrong ground if you're on the wrong ground you're going to have everything going wrong around you you're never going to see the things that you want to see you're always going to feel like you're a victim you're always going to feel like things are happening to you instead of for you you're always going to feel like the world's against you and it's not because of the world it's because you're in the wrong place that's not where you're meant to be you're doing the wrong things and you're reaping what you're sowing you get that they call it karma but the bible calls it reaping what you're sowing you put you put it out there you're stealing you're, you're you're fighting you're putting out there drama and you're getting back what you're putting out there right so when they do it to you it's like oh how dare you how dare you don't you know who i am like how dare you but you can do it to others like that's no and i used to do that so i understand but this is just to inform people that, you know, life and life itself, you know, um, will throw you through a, a blunder, a blender or something like that, to where it weeds out everything and it puts things in its proper perspective. Things, your eyes will grow open and you will see, you will see like the people that thought that you were, that they, they were in your corner, right? You're probably your biggest enemies. Because a lot of the friends that are in the world that they call you friends is because, not all of them, but a lot of people, you know, are just using other people. And they're only as good to them as how filled up their gas tank is to take me where I need to go. Or if, do you have what I need? You know, do you have either food in the fridge or do you have money in your wallet or do you have this or that? But if you take that off the table, many of them will leave and that's what some of you haven't figured out yet but others of you are figuring it out and others of you know exactly what I'm talking about so I'm not gonna make this video too much longer but it was basically just exposing exposing things for what they are and really bringing it to light so that you could have a clear picture as to what is what and how the life really works because life is going to show you and demonstrate it to you. So, yeah, everybody's in the same e in the program. Everybody. Hope this video helps you. And uh, comment. Let me know. Let me know uh, what video you want me to make next. About what subject. If this video even intrigues you. If, it even, uh, if you even want to watch another video, let me know. All right?